Because according to purpose, man ought to return unto the Lord. Let your word enlighten our hearts so that we may know the way back unto you. That the power of the ones upon the life of man may be destroyed completely. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. At this time, when everyone, all and sundry, every nation is besieged and troubled by the deadly virus, it was placed on our hearts by the Lord to show man the way back unto him. Because of the truth, and by that, the avenue gave room for the leadership to be lost from man. Because in Genesis, God said, let us make man in our image that he might have dominion. The power to dominion was lost because of sin. Today we want to talk about the mystery of the ministration of the serpent. Because from the beginning, God understood the mindset of the devil that connotes the serpent. God knew what he had in mind for man. Because actually, it was true that God made the heavens and the earth, Genesis chapter 1. And the earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the deep. And God, did, the Bible began to tell us how God began to make the earth and not the heavens. So that is to tell us the heavens were made, even the place of God, before the earth. Now the angels that were made in heaven, the devil was one of them, the, the, the serpent, the, the Lucifer, as he was called. But he had an intent in himself. In Isaiah chapter 12, the Bible says, Isaiah chapter 14, sorry, from verse 12, the Bible says, How you have fallen from heaven. How have you fallen from heaven? Oh, Lucifer. Lucifer. Son of the morning. Son of the morning. How you are cut down to the ground. How have you been cut down to the ground? You who weaken the nations. You weaken the nations. For you have said in your heart. You said in your heart. I will ascend into heaven. I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. Exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will also sit on the mount of the congregation. Sitting on the mountain of the congregation. On the farther side of the north. At the northern side. I will ascend above the heights of the cloud. Ascending above the heights of the cloud. I will be like the most high. And be like the most high. 
But with this intent, he has not accomplished anything. The Bible says God cut it short. He came down. He was digging out of heaven. He said, how are you funny? He said, because of what was in his heart. But God made man. And gave man the dominion. I should say this here. Of all things that God made, there are, there are a lot of uh, biblical commentators and uh, biblical writers or scriptural or, I don't know, a lot of scriptural books. One, one, there are school of thoughts to each one. One says, God made Adam. And another said, God did not make Adam alone. And all this, they, they, everything has its formula. But let's see God in his creative mentality. He created male and female. The intent of God was this. In Genesis chapter 1, from verse 24, from verse 26, God said, let us make man. Then God said, he said, let us make man in our image. Man in our image. According to our likeness. According to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the Now this is the thing. I'll make my image and it must conform to my likeness. The image conforming to God's likeness. It would not say, it not say what? Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea. It would have this dominion over the fish of the sea, one. Over the birds of the earth. Over the birds of the earth, two. Over the cattle. Over the cattle, three. Over all the earth. Over all the earth, four. And over every creeping thing. Five dominions given to every man God will make in his image after his likeness, according to his likeness. And when God will make it, God is the superior, is the supreme uh, 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 being that understands the end from the beginning. Nothing co- catches God on our ways. Nothing, nothing comes as a surprise to God. Is a master planner, the supreme master planner. <clears throat> so he decided in himself, I'll make man. But let me do it this way. Take it one after the other. What did he do? Verse 27 said, So God created man in his own image. God created his image. Yes? In the image of God. This is a reiteration. In the image of God, the God created him. Male and female, he created them. He made them male and female. Yes, talk to me. Then God blessed them. Look at the blessing he gave them. He don't bless them. And said to them, and said, Be fruitful and yes, multiply. Yes. Fill the earth and subdue it. Yes. Have dominion over the fish of the sea. Let's go by the dominion again. One. Over the birds of the earth. Two. And over every living thing that moves on the earth. Three. And God said. You see. He proposed to give five dominion. To a man he made in his image after his likeness. But he gave three dominion. So the casual man he made only in his image, not conforming to his likeness. This is the beauty of God's uh, 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 wisdom. You see, everything the devil does today would be against him in the end because God knows the end from the beginning. But the devil would want to copy God because he has lived with God for so long a time. So he decided to begin to frame God for man. He began to do as if he can play God in the lives of man. 
But God remains undisturbed, untroubled, unperturbed. Our God is the one that would give you ease and peace, even in tempests. God, after doing that, he made his image. The chapter 2 of Genesis told us, and God breathed into his nose the breath of life. Just one. Don't forget to make male and female. Now he took one like this. Let, let's, let's take a look of this thing. There are many men in Israel. They are all Israelites. And God decided these people have rejected me. Samuel, make a king for them. It was the same God who told Samuel to anoint Saul over them all. Saul became the one that has the dominion. They became, they have served. They are served for the kingdom of Saul before they became. That has been the, the, the way God does his things. It will take one man to represent all men before his person. The man that has his spirit, the image of God and the likeness of God. The likeness of God is his spirit. The image of God has his duty and his glory. So when you have the beauty of God on you and the glory of God, and you don't, when you don't have the spirit of God, you can't get the glory of God. A lot of us are beautified. But that beauty without the spirit loses glory. Our song is the reflection says, and he told the you, you. Now this is the thing. God took one of the male he created and brought him and gave him his likeness to oversee the living. And God took that one from amongst all others. He now gave him to have the garden, the seat of power. Like in Nigeria today, every president in the world, everybody elected into a state office, the presidential office, the gubernatorial office, would have a place to sit, to oversee. Adam occupied the place for the first time as the first fruit of God. Here is the thing. The devil saw Adam having five dominions. And he, having none, but to minister unto Adam, he ministers from the presence of God to Adam. Adam that was formed right before him. God who knew the intent of man and every creature he made, looked at the devil and saw what was in him. That he is proposing to be over the congregation, over the people of God. That has been his mind. That was his original intent. I cannot sit here serving and ministering to the so called people of God. Why would I not be over them? For at least they are made before me. I, I, I saw. They are making. I was a partaker in the in the formation in their in the formation of their faith. But this is God. This we have. The salt, the, the dust, the earth, the flesh. The devil was part of the thing. This is not anybody. This is just the house. 
in which the person works. Now there is the image in you and the likeness over you. The devil taught him himself, I will sit at the northern side. What is in the northern side? Let's see. Psalm 48. David, who knew the mind of a man after God's heart, got the gimmick of the devil and made a, an announcement. Psalm 48 from verse 1. He said, Great is the Lord. Great is the Lord. Yeah. And great is the great. Uh -huh. In the city of our God. Uh -huh. In his holy mountain. Uh -huh. Beautiful in elevation. Yes. The joy of the whole earth. Is the Mount Zion. Yes. On the side of the Lord. Uh -huh. The city of the great king. Uh -huh. God is in our places. Mount Zion. Side of the Lord. The city of the great king. God is in our palaces he, for a refuge. He is known as our refuge. The city of <coughs> Zion, the side of the north, the city of the, the king. He wants to sit in the place of the congregation of God, the city of God himself. He wants to have dominion over the children of God. He wants to take charge and control. He never wanted to minister. So he had his plots. What do I do? How do I achieve this? In the bid to achieve that, the devil decided, I need to play a wise game. I need to be wise. But the wisdom of the devil is unlike the wisdom we talk about. The wisdom of the devil is the, what the Bible terms subtlety. It's so subtle. He, he plays a game. It's a, it's a game player. What, does he, what did he do? He came as subtle as he will be. In Genesis chapter 1, in chapter 3. Let's see. Genesis chapter 3, from verse 1. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field. Now, he like, he, like every other beast of the field, decided, no, I would not be like them. I want to, I have an intention. The devil being represented here as the serpent. Came in another wisdom, in another methodology, it, it, it decided to become what man cannot understand. What was he coming with? It, it, it was subtle. Like, oh, eh, eh. Read again. Now, the serpent was more subtle than any beast. It was of more the subtle field. than every beast of the field. Which the Lord had made. Yes. And he said to the woman. He said to the woman. As God indeed said. Look, look at the question. As God indeed said. You shall not eat of every tree of the garden. You shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said to the serpent. The woman said. We may eat the fruit of the trees of the garden. We may eat the fruit of the trees of the garden. But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden. But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden. God has said. God has said. You shall not eat. You shall not eat of it. Nor shall you touch it. Nor touch it. Lest you die. Lest you die. Then the serpent said to the woman. Listen to what he said. You will not surely die. This is the subject. He became very cheap. He came, introduced himself to play a, a fair player, a nice, friendly, a, a, a deceiver. This every deceiver has this method. They play a friendly game to the city. He came in a fair-like manner. Uh, it does say you should, you know, he ministers to them regularly. So it's not a thing anybody should be afraid of. That was the intent. So he came and played the game. As God said, he should not eat of every 
be of the church. If you must say, oh, why not? We can eat everything, but this one that is in the midst of the church. You see, the devil understands the tone. He understands the tone of God. The, the problem with Christians or any worshiper of God today, if you refuse to understand God's tone and lay it there as he said it, the devil will take advantage of you. This is this will be a warning. If you want to be of God, you must understand what he said and the pay, the play. So the devil came and said, you will not, what the, I did not say you should not be. The woman added to the word of God. He, she added. Proverbs chapter 30, the Bible says, every word of God is pure. Don't add. Chapter 30, from verse 5. From verse 5. The Bible says, Every word of God is pure. Every word of God is pure. Is a shoot to those who put their trust in you. Yes. Do not add to his word. Act not. Lest he rebuke you. God will rebuke you. And you'll be found a liar. And you'll be found a liar. The devil saw an addition. God did not say you should not touch. No, it. He did not say lest you die. What did he say? Expressly. Genesis chapter 2, verse 16. He said, And the Lord command, there was a command. Lord that was a command, not a law. Saying, saying Of every tree of the garden, of you, will every tree of the garden you will freely eat. But of the tree of the knowledge of good but and of evil. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall not, you eat. Shall not eat. For in the day that you eat the of it, the day you eat of it, you shall surely, you shall surely die. die. God has his word. It is a very clear word, a sentence. Now here's the thing. The devil played nice. Did you wisely? When he said somebody is subtle, that person knew how, knows how to deal wisely. Like the Pharaoh that knew not Joseph did the Israelites in Exodus chapter 1. That's their way. Verse 10. He said, Come, let us deal wisely with them. You, let's deal wisely. That's what subtlety means. To be subtle. You know to deal wisely. So you will play your game and nobody will know where you are going. But you know for sure where you are going. So he came, he said, Did God say you should not eat of everything of the garden? Did he put you to fasting? God said you should just be here and sitting and fasting and and there was no prayer there because there was no church, there was no altar. <laughs> God, from the beginning, what he was to them in Eden was is what he, he chose to become to us after the end of age. When the Bible said the the the, the tabernacle of the Lord is with man, and he will be with them. He just comes, they discuss, he plays with them, he goes back to his mother board. Because the earth is an inheritance to the children of God. That's what the Bible says. God chose to be in heaven. And he gave the earth to man. Where is this man? This happens. Who came to minister wrath to man? Who came to show man a way into the Lord of God? He came and said, If God says we should not eat, he was a we may eat. But uh, he said the ones that is in the middle of the garden, we should not eat. You see, that there was a mistake there. Two trees are in the middle of the garden. The tree of life and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. <clears throat> That's what chapter 2 told us. God planted the two in the garden, in the midst of the garden. Now, he said, we should not eat in the food that is in the midst of the garden. We should not uh, uh, eat nor touch 
lest we die. Oh, the devil saw a way to take advantage of the simplicity. The simplicity of man. And he came in. What did he say? Then the serpent said to the woman, He said to the woman, You will not surely die. Oh, wow. In, order, in a bit to show God the life, he said, You will not surely die. I know what God meant. You don't understand your God. That's why it's a pity for anyone that worships God and does not understand God. And does not know his God. And like I always say in most of my teachings, the knowledge of God exists here. If from here God does not know you, you are not qualified for heaven. Prayers does not take anybody to heaven. Fasting does not take anybody to heaven. Is that a, just a means for to, 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 to make you, to enslave you? Then we should pray. Jesus said so. We should pray. At all times. And not faint. But what Jesus is painting is, it is not the prayer that we pray that takes you up there. Now, the devil came and said, you would not surely die. For, For God knows that in the day you eat of it. Listen to where he's coming from. Don't forget what was in his heart. Before he was driven down, I will put my tone over that of the Most High, so that I will be like him. I want to be over the the the, the, the congregation of the assemble of his people. He does say, "For God knows that what that in the day you eat of it, that in the day you eat of that thing, your eyes will be open. Wow, and you will be like God. Your eyes." Your eyes shall be open, and you will be like God. You will be like God, knowing good and evil. Look at the lines. You will be like God. Look at this intent. I will be like the Most High. He failed. Then he said, "If His love is on these ones, I will make them continue my in, my imagination." I will sell my imagination to them. So that in a bid for me to achieve and attain what I have proposed, I will do that through them. God is a God that knew what is to come. Hence, he sat and said, it is not good, out of every good thing, he saw something that was not good. It is not good that this man will be able to I'll make a help meet for him. In order for God to achieve that, he said, he will remove something. The whole man, you know the preaching we have for marriage today, he said one plus one is not is one. That's stupidity. God does not make one plus one. God took the whole man, took out a rib from the man. This man became a fraction. The rib became a fraction. Until the rib is added to the man, it becomes, uh, it does not, it's not one. So when you print one plus one is one, that, that will make God a dollar. But our God is most wise. Now here is the thing. God, deli- it, there was a mystery. God deliberately took out that one so that even if man failed and failed, there will be a remnant for God's focus. What a wisdom. At the falling and failing of man, God had it in mind. I will shock the devil. And that's why when the time for judgment came, he played the game. He deliberately gave the devil the mystery he had in mind when he said, I'll put anything between you and the woman. It was the woman you, you deceived, you began to say, you will not die. Don't worry, she's not dying. 
she died, but she's not totally dying. The remnant that I made her for will come. It confuses the devil for God to say there is a seed for the dead. A woman, the man that was dead, God said, I'll put enmity between you and the woman. So the woman that was dead had an, have an enemy. God continues to say, and between our seed. What? Should there be a seed for the dead? And your seed. Her seed will break your head. And your seed will bruise his heel. What a wonderful thought. What a mindset. The ministration of the devil began from Eden. He brought man to the knowledge of wrath. He said, God knows. What contends with God today is the knowledge of wrath. And that is the same weapon which God is the same man. God will have one man get out of wrath. What begins the wrath? What did the devil tell the woman? Let's see here. You will not surely die. For God knows. That in the day you eat of it. That in the day you eat of it. Your eyes will be open. Your eyes shall be open. And you will be like God. You will be like God. Knowing good and evil. Knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food. Begin to see now. The woman saw that that tree was good for food. How come? Merely seeing a tree. Oh, this one is good for food. What what type of uh, nature is that? Yes? That it was pleasant to the eyes. She saw that it was pleasant to the eyes. And a tree desirable to make one wise. And a tree that you need to desire to be wise. She took of its fruit. The devil brought an unknown, a strange knowledge into man. And that is the knowledge that today culminates into what we call science. Science. You know, the word science in itself is an embodiment of knowledge. The knowledge that was that began from my hypothesis. That's why the first enemy of science is God. Science denounces that there is God. Science say you you are the one that can do anything by yourself. The moment you bring the science of man, the science of the serpent, into the journey, the problem begins. With God, everything that God says, you begin to say, this cannot be possible. You don't need to sit at this. This is not true. This is this. You have every way to condemn what God said. Why? Because of the signs of the serpent. So the woman saw the tree was good for food. It was good to the eyes. It was a tree to be desired. To make one wise. She took. Of his fruit. And ate. And gave it to her husband. The Bible says. And their eyes. Then the eyes of both of them were opened. The eyes of both. That already shows God is a liar. To them. So everything the devil does. The science of the serpent. Is a science of the wrath of God that will teach you to say God can lie. God is a liar. God told them the day you eat of it, you shall surely die. The devil said the day you eat of it, 
your eyes shall be opened. And the Bible forgot to say, and they died. Death became an inference. But their eyes were open. Tell me, who would you have called God if you are Adam and Eve? They saw God and they say, oh, this man cannot be trusted. So they ran. They ran away. Ever since then, the devil became the representative of man in everything that belongs to man. Because it was unto Adam that he was given. Hence, he could join the children of God when they gather before God. And God saw him and said, Did you, have you seen Job? He became man's representative. But until Christ, that he was driven off. That's why he just said, cast them out. I don't want them around me. Because Jesus is the second man. Man died as soon as Adam fell. The nature of man was out. The Adamic nature stands. What was God's intent after the devil did that? God was not dismayed. He was not disturbed. He looked at it. I have an intention already. Let's go a little bit into, into physics, light. When there is a light on any object, the shadow is cast. But you don't need a light to cast an image for a shadow. You need a mirror, optics now. The image is formed as soon as you look at the glass or the mirror. The shadow is cast as soon as, as light comes upon the object. Adam was just a shadow. Why Jesus is the image? So the devil succeeded in throwing, casting down the shadow. So that he pretends to be the image. No wonder when the true image came, you know, we say all this, they look at the world and the glory and everything. It was given to me. Jesus is not G. He looked at him because he knew the truth. That even the, the totality of the earth was not yet, was not fully given to Adam. Because he mismanaged the garden, even as at the day he began the journey. Now God began to look for a way to salvage man. For that to be, the serpent must be dealt with. For God to have a way and a means to restore his son in the nature, in the Adamic nature back, the serpent must first be dealt with. What did he do? In the days of Moses, God called Moses, come now, I need you to go and deliver my people. It was, God was just playing the same game since Adam, man became enslaved. The man that was supposed to be the chief became enslaved. So God said, no problem, this is what I will do. I will deliver my man. He chose a breed. Abraham was the Adam this time. From Noah to Abraham. And God began to nurture Abraham in the covenant until Jacob and then Israel. And they became so large. They became 70 and they went to Egypt. This is the thing. The devil needed, God needed to play his game too. 
Here is the game of God. I must submit the spirit of my sonship to the devil to retrieve it back from his children. So how did he play it? It was out to send Joseph to Egypt. Don't forget the Bible says the king reigned and knew not Joseph. He would not know Joseph. Because as soon as Joseph became the prime minister of Egypt, like we, we call him, his name became Safnatpania. Every king that reigns in Egypt knew Safnatpania. They knew not the name Joseph. So he died. Last name Safnatpania is boldly written in Egypt. Because he saved the land. And he was in office. Even over the household of Pharaoh. So there cannot be in history a king that would not know him. But the Pharaoh that reigned with Joseph only knew Joseph and his people. So he knew Joseph was an Israeli. A Hebrew boy who became a minister, a prime minister in Egypt. Now this is the beauty. God, in his wisdom, sold Joseph. Joseph was sown in, into Egypt so that the spirit of the firstborn, that was the one unto whom the love of the father was, was sown into Egypt in order for God to retreat and deliver his people. God would have been without a case to take back his the, uh, uh, the, the, the dominion of his children. He sold Joseph. He planted Joseph into Egypt. And the seed of God grew for, Pharaoh, for Egypt. Because he grew as after Pania. The whole Egypt knew him. And the things were going. So Egypt became. Israel came. The Hebrew guys came and bowed. Not to Joseph, but to Joseph in Safna Pania. They bowed to their unknown brother. So God is encapsulating, it is dealing a mystery in that day because he needed to overthrow the devil, the serpent who took charge and said, I will hold man to ransom. And God came this way. Joseph planted, he grew, Israel came and bowed to him. So the firstborn, the spirit of the firstborn of the Hebrew the children of God were sown out and sold out for free unto the Egypts or the Egyptians. God knew where he was going. At this time, Pharaoh, like the devil, dealt with the woman in the garden, came and said, we need to deal wisely with them. Because we must be sure. What did he say? Come. Exodus chapter 1, from verse 10. Come. Come. Let us deal wisely with them. Let's deal wisely with them. Let them multiply. Yes. And it happens in the event of war. In the event of war. That they also join our enemies. They will join our enemies. And fight against us. And fight against us. And so go up out of the land. Yes. Therefore... They said master over there. This is the this was when they became servants. As soon as the devil played the game of subtlety, the serpent played the game of subtlety, man became servants. He became the representative of man. Not until this time God did not see any anything he would do. And at this time, God said, yes, I am close to my aim. And then he came. 
Don't you forget that it was that same Pharaoh that nurtured Moses. Look at God's wisdom. So Moses must have to know what entails. The devil copied what was in the household of God and began to misrepresent God here. That does not bother God. God sent Moses. Go study the house of the devil. Study it and know it. So Moses went. God kept him in the house of Pharaoh. He grew there. He knew he was a Jew. But he must be nurtured in the house of Pharaoh. That was the, a divine... A, 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 a divine a calculation by God. At this time, Moses killed an Egyptian. And then he left because he was out. The Hebrew boy, you know the story, the Hebrew boy came and, the Hebrew guys came and said, you want to kill us like you killed the Egyptian? I will make you a judge over us. And he, he left, he ran away. At this time, God's time was out to say, I need to deliver my people. He called Moses. Come now. I want to use you. You know the problem. Moses saw, I was out of this place because of what happened. But here is the case now. God, don't, don't send me. I don't want to go. So he played all his game, but God said, no, it is you have designed for this game. I need to bring out my people. I need to deliver out of slavery my children. I need my 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 sons back with me. Nobody can become the representative of my son. I need them as a matter of urgency. And then Moses said, they would not believe me. What do I do if they don't believe me? Chapter 4, Exodus. He was talking to God. Exodus chapter 4, from verse 1. Then Moses answered and said, Moses answered and said, But suppose they will not believe me. No, no, suppose these people will disagree with me. Or listen to my voice. And they would not listen to my voice. Suppose they say, what's If they now say, the Lord has not said, appeared to you. Don't mind him. The Lord did not speak to him. So the Lord said to him, what did he say? What is that in your hand? What do you have in your hand? He said, he said, a rod. A rod. And he said, God said, cast it on the ground. Throw it on the ground. So he cast it on the ground. Yes. And it became a serpent. Mm -hmm. And Moses fled from it. Look then, at God. The one that enslaved man in the beginning was the serpent. Here is the base where God wants to hit him. God sold his son, the one unto whom the love of the father was. Like he sold Jesus in order to retrieve everything for man. Now he came. He said, what is in your hand, Moses? It says a, a, a rod, cast it down. And Moses did so. And he became a serpent. God is confronting the power of the world with the power of the world. A similitude of what they have, a similitude of their personality, what they look like. When God wants to fight man, he does not use a, 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 not a wind from heaven that will blow down. It is the works of man that fights man. When man chose to stand against God, to talk against God, to castigate God, to see God as, who is he? What does he know? What We can live our lives all by ourselves. God is not disturbed. He knows what to do. And he does it. And that which he does are through to the end. So he said, cast it down. And Moses did so. Yes? And it became a serpent. And that rod 
became a serpent. And Moses fled from it. Moses fled. Then the Lord said to Moses, The Lord said, Reach out your hand. Stretch forth your hand now. And take it by the tail. Take the, the same rod, the serpent, by the tail. And he reached out his hand and it, caught it. Yes. And it became a rod in it, his hand. It became a rod in his hand. What a God. What a God. Reach out your hand. Take it. Now, God is sending Moses, the man that has the shepherd dog. He put in the, in the shepherd dog the power to overthrow the power of the serpent of this world. The power to take, to arrest every ministration of the first serpent. Serpent to confront serpent. Look at God. And he taught Moses, how, don't just go there and begin to throw serpents down. You see God? It's, it's a very, God is a very technical and tactical God. The devil saw the science of God. From the science, he now, he now carved out a science for himself and man. That is science is a killing science. The science of the devil is the science that destroys. It destroys because it wants to enslave. But the science of God is the science of freedom. Just be open, be faithful, be truthful. So there's the devil, God sent Moses. He got there. He told Moses, be careful. This is the way you do it. You don't just begin to... He said, the most... Pharaoh would ask you. Let's see. Exodus chapter 7. From verse 8. Then the Lord spoke to Moses and mm. Aaron, saying, saying, When Pharaoh speaks to you, When Pharaoh speaks to you, Saying, saying Show a miracle. For it, yourself. Until he asks you to do something. Oh God, what, what a God, what a God. Until Pharaoh asks you to show a miracle. Why is that? God knew the devil, he, 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 the devil is in anticipation. Where is the seed of the woman? He knows the code. The seed of the woman that will fight me. Must be in likeness of me. Must understand me. He must be able to to know my way because I have something that is superior. So he, he has taught his own to know the way. So God God told Moses, if he says, show a miracle. This is the beginning. Tell him, let him know that this is a power that is come to confront and take away the power that is behind his dominion. The Bible says in Proverbs, it said, the, the wise man, a righteous man, scales the city of the mighty and throws down the the confident, the strength of the confidence. The righteous man scales the city of the mighty. That is the way of God fighting. When God is out of contend, he scales what you have and it goes for the strength of the confidence. So the Egyptian Pharaoh knew the strength of the confidence we have is in this thing. Show us a miracle. And Moses said, this is the power that you know. Do you have anything to challenge it? And Pharaoh laughed. <laughs> this is a cheap one. Let's see. Read on. Then he shall say to Aaron. Say to Aaron. Take your rod. Take your rod. And cast it before Pharaoh. Yes. And let it become a serpent. <laughs> yes. 
So Moses and Aaron went into into Pharaoh. Yes. And they did so, just as the Lord commanded. Yes. And Aaron cast down his rod before uh-huh. Pharaoh, and before his serpent. Yes. And it became a serpent. It became a serpent. But Pharaoh also called the wise men. Pharaoh quickly called his wise men. And the sorcerers. The sorcerers. So the magicians of Egypt, they also did in the manner. Everybody began to cast their rods. With their enchantment. And enchanted. For every man threw down his rod. Yes. And they became serpents. Uh huh. <laughs> but Aaron's rod swallowed up their rod. Oh, what a mighty God. That became the end of the failure of the ministration of the serpents. It began the end. But what is the as at that time, Pharaoh's heart was shaking. But God said, no, not this time, because I have something ahead. Finish that, uh, that verse. And Pharaoh's heart grew hard, and he did not heed them, mm. as the Lord had said. God, God pumped his heart. He said, I will hide in his heart. Why? God's intention was what he said in chapter 4, for verse 22. What did he say? Then he shall say to Pharaoh. Say to Pharaoh. Thus says the Lord. This is what the Lord says. Israel is my son. Israel is my son. My firstborn. Hello. Don't forget he sold a son. The one on whom the love of the father is. Joseph. Into Egypt. Israel is my son. The all the Hebrew boys, the Israeli came and bowed. To Joseph as an Egyptian, not as a Jew. Israel is my son. My firstborn. My firstborn. So I say to you. I say to you. Let my son go. Let my son go. That he may serve me. That he may serve me. But if you refuse. If you refuse. Indeed, I will kill your son. He may not refuse. That he might refuse. God had to pump his heart. What a God is challenging the authority of the serpent for me then over his sons. Now he's saying, I will take it from here so that even the devil will be afraid. No wonder the Bible says, You believe that there is no God. He said, Even the devil believes and he trembles that he will be afraid. So God said, my son, if you refuse, as you have refused to let them go, what did he say? Then, I will kill your son. I will kill your son. Your firstborn. Oh my God. You see God. God's intention, since the spirit of the firstborn of Israel was sown for Egypt, was given to Saphatphania, the Egyptian Saphatphania, the Joseph is the little boy. God said, until I take away the spirit of the firstborn, I will not release your mind. Pharaoh. So God began to pump in order to trouble and destroy every power of the gods of it. From the waters to the st- land to the vegetation to the rain to everything, every God that the Egyptian knows about, God contended with them. The moment he swallowed up the snake, the snakes of Egypt, the power of, the, the original power behind their confidence, he swallowed it up. Now God began to punish the land. The plague he has promised this was a plague that was since the days of Abraham. God remembered the pain Pharaoh inflicted on Abraham when he took his wife, when he misused Sarah, and he treated Abraham very well, a good in law. He misused his wife. 
The Bible says, and God cleansed the land. And Pharaoh sent them out. God did not say he should pray. You no, know, it happened on another time when Abimelech took her. God came to her and said, if you, that woman sitting beside you, you are dead because of her. Return her to her husband. He said, but God, he said, she said, he is he is a brother. And this, he, he too said, he is her sister. God said, I don't want to waste your time. Take, give him back his wife. He's a prophet. He will pray for you. He said, because as at that time, every woman in the land had become barren. God blessed the Egyptians and waited. And he remembered the plague now. So he began to fight the gods of Egypt. Until the day that he would take his sons out. What was the sign? He said, let them put the mark on the, on the doorpost. But before this time, even the Israelites were suffering from the plague until a time. Because as at that time, the magicians too were doing what Moses was doing. When he goes to chapter 7, that's in chapter 7. The magicians are, are happy. They were doing everything. But it got to a time. When God said, Moses, throw the rod down. They threw the rod and it became serpent. And trouble began in Egypt. They turned the water to blood. Frog came. Lies came. This one came. And then by chapter 8, God raised his finger. So that the magicians could not work out what the, the what Moses was doing. All along, they turned, let's see chapter 7. In verse um, Verse 22. Then the magicians of Egypt did so with their enchantment. Mm. And Pharaoh's heart grew hard, and he did not heed them, mm. as the Lord had said. And Pharaoh turned and went into his house. Neither was his heart moved by this. So the Egyptians dug all around the river for water to drink, because they could not drink the water of the river. And seven days passed after the Lord had struck the river. Now when you get to chapter 8, let's read from verse 18. Now the magicians saw what with their enchantment oh. to bring forth life, but they could not. They, at this time, they could not. So there were light on man and beast. Yes. Then the magicians said to Pharaoh, They said, this is the finger of God. God has raised his finger. But Pharaoh's heart grew hard. God was pumping his heart for something, yes? And he did not hit them. Uh -huh. Just as the Lord had said. Yes. And the Lord said to Moses, mm -hmm. Rise early in the morning and stand before Pharaoh. And he comes out to the water. Go to 21, 22. Or else, if you will not let my people go. Yes. Behold, I will send swarms of flies. Fl flies will come. On you and your servants. On you and your servants. On your people and into your houses. Your people and uh, your houses. The houses of the Egyptians yes. shall, be full, shall be full of swarms of flies. Yes. And also the ground on which they stand. Yes. And in that day, I will set apart the land of Goshen. Because his finger was out, there was a setting apart. He severed the land of Goshen, yes? In which my people dwell. Yes. That no form of fly shall be there. In order that you may know that I am the Lord in the midst of the land. This is where God began to say, Israel will not partake again in the plague of the land. This is where God began to say, my people will be severed, they will be saved. 
I'll begin to punish the enemy, the culprit now. The serpent is gone so hard. His ministration in the world is so hard that it became the instrument of wrath upon everyone that chose to disobey God or be against God. Hence, in Exodus chapter, in Numbers chapter 21, it happened from verse, verse 4. Then they journeyed from Mount Hall. When they, the Israelites left Egypt. Yes. By the way of the Red Sea. Mm -hmm. To go around the land of Edom. Yes. And the soul of the people became very discouraged. Their yeah, the soul were discouraged on the way. Why? And the people spoke against God and against Moses. All that the devil needed is for you to say God is a liar. Today, most of what we preach, most of what we announce to ourselves, is a thing to show God the lies in God. Most of we we we, we have turned God to to a money factory. The church lost the power. The church has sold to money. They say the love of money is the root of all evil. Money and the love of money. They are two different things. Money, the, Solomon said money is a defense. Wisdom is a defense. Power is a defense. He said the excellency of knowledge is that wisdom gives life to everyone that has it. Money never gave life. Like to us in Celestial Church, Jesus came and told Papa and Shofa in the Constitution, like he said, that money is not mine. The love belongs to him. When God says money is not mine, what are we looking for? But you know the church today, I mean the global church, everybody, every single preacher, nobody is out to show power. The essence of money in the the the, uh, uh, the the environment of the spirit is is uh, uh, I don't know is the is destruction list of destruction. The use the importance of money destroys every plan of God. Stands against the spirit of God. No wonder in resurrection. The angel came from heaven and announced to the women, Come see, he sees it. He's no longer here. But guess what? The soldiers who saw the angel and the mighty powerful things that came with it went to the town. And began, after they conferred, the Bible said, Matthew chapter 28. The ministration of the serpent. What was introduced? From verse 11. Now, while they were going, they were going. Behold, some God came into the city. Yes. And reported to the chief priest. They saw, all they saw, they saw the truth. They reported the thing to the chief priests. All the things that are happening. Yes. That happened. When they had assembled with the elders and consulted they came, together. They came together with the elders and consulted. Yes? They gave a large sum of money. Money came. That's the, that's the venom of the serpent. Yes? Saying. Saying. Tell them his disciples came at night. So money went farther than the sweet. Jesus, the, the angel told the, the women that came, came before, they reported to the disciples. The disciples could not even believe them. But the, the owner of the media, owner of science, owner of technology, the owner of everything that sells, sat together, introduced money. So they went to the print media, the visual media, the social media, all the, the places information can come in through. And they gave money. They said, what was the 
What should we preach? Tell them his disciples came at night and stole him away while we slept. Can, can, can soldiers open their mouth and say civilians came and steal in our barracks? Have you, have you thought about it? But because money is on the table, soldiers said the disciples came home and stole while we slept. And if this comes to the governor's ear, <laughs> we will appease him. We will talk, we will give him money. There's money for our pizza. I'll make you secure. So when the church put aside the power of resurrection and began to run for money, the venom of the devil came in. The poison of the serpent was introduced. Hence, everybody be, thought we, we became irrelevant, even in our place. The church of God is relevant when there is a show of power. Jesus made it such that whether you like it or not, the first point of the show of power. I love Jesus. Luke chapter 10. He told his disciples. Verse 19. He says, see. Behold. Behold. I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions. I give you power to trample upon serpents and scorpions. The first enemy. The first enemy. The first one, he that thought he had the authority, Jesus said, I give you the power to tread upon serpents and scorpions. And, all, and over all the power of the enemies. And over the powers of the enemies. And nothing shall by any means. I love that idea. Nothing shall by any means beat the waters. Be it the air, be it the land, whatever means the poison of the enemy will come from. He said, It shall not hurt you until you show power. Power is not just sitting and praying and fasting. You know, the church we, we tell ourselves now fasting and prayer, everybody. We have been fasting and prayer, all are praying, all are this. Yet, this thing came and nailed the church and affected the church. God, we should pray that he should raise his finger and separate his children in this time of the venom of the serpent. When God did that one, when the Israelites spoke against God, we are there before. Number 21, they spoke against God. And the people spoke against God and against, and against Moses. Moses. Why have you brought us up out of Egypt? They, they began to condemn the wisdom of God. Talk to me. To die in the wilderness. Yeah. For there is no food and no water. This is the this is the God that, that prepared the table for them for 40 years. That will prepare. Because they just left. That will prepare the table for them for 40 years. They knew not what he has. They began to condemn him. How can that be? Can we continue in this? Is it possible? You just brought us here to die. You, you, you imagine God. God knew they would have wanted to go through the way of the Amorites. He just said, no. I have a way that nobody has ever gone through. Go to the sea. They got to the sea. They were speaking against God. Moses, we told you we should die in Egypt. It's better for us to die in Egypt. The devil, he, he has infused his poison, his toxic poison into their system so that no matter where they are, they will talk what is in the heart of the devil. They will talk according to the mindsets, the mentality of the devil. I want to be like God. Every man today lost to be like God. Every man today chose to act like God. They want to be God in the state of God. Even in the house of God. We want to be God in the things of God. 
We want to be God. We should begin to repent. Let's see. What happened to them? So, the Lord sent fiery serpents. God sent fiery serpents. Among the people. Yes. And they beat the people. God chose that they felt the pain of that their master that they were what they have worshipped before now. See what I saved you from. And he began to beat them, yes? And many of the people of Israel died. Like he, it's come now, like coronavirus. Science did what he would do. The woman saw. And he, she, she said, this is a tree to be desired to make one wise. Science. A tree to come to I need this tree. I'll be wiser than uh, people. In school of thought, say uh, she slept with the devil. Very many school of thoughts, but that does not commit into anything. What the idea is is she got a strange knowledge that is transfused into her. Even in Christianity, that's why today we have a lot of school of thoughts. In the house of the God, as touching God. That's the power of the, the enemy, the power of the devil. Walking in the house of God. You have diverse interpretation of one thing. Then with this, as you say, from what perspective you look for me, it is not yours. Follow what the owner said. How can you interpret what does not belong to you? The owner said, this is what I gave. If you commune with the owner, then you will get what he meant. Now, everybody is running back in. Look at the whole world. God is using science against man. Those who, those who did this thing, never could think it would get to a state we cannot, we would not be able to handle. You want to make a practical experiment. Look at the way it turned out to me. God is saying, when I am wrought, when the, you see the wrath of God on the earth, begin to know two things. Romans chapter 1, verse 18. God said what? For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven. The wrath of God is revealed from heaven. Against all ungodliness. Against all ungodliness. And unrighteousness of men. And unrighteousness of men. Who suppress the truth. Who suppress, who hold the truth in unrighteousness. in unrighteousness. The wrath of God is seen. All of what we should stand against, we are standing for. Because we have not a means to show the power of our God. Everybody say, God called me. God called me. God called me. I do. We don't know how many people God called. God is not even showing his God. He has called everybody. I thank God for the life of SBG Oshofa. The man after God's heart. The man I, I have not seen a like the, a, a any comparable being like in this generation. The man the, who, who God decided to show to the world that I have sent him is too tall amongst many. God bear, bear witness to his exit. Rainbow came down to witness to the man who the whole world will say this one is cannot be called the man of God. It must be a demonic man. The heavens came down in light at his uh, 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 at his burial. Yet we have God's general. We call them generals. Whereas they are they are still sergeants. Because until God bears record, 
Uh, we cannot call you a general. If, if we say you are a general, we are we are giving you the uh, uh, the name, the title by ourselves. The one that sent you has not given you the title. The Bible says the end of a man is better than his beginning. Nobody knew the beginning of his beginning. It was just going somewhere, somehow. But God through him descended this church in order that no power of the world he said, I won't get to read you. I won't show to read that. The serpent was funny. Before the mighty power of this church. And God gave it to some some man we call him Nobis. Intellectuals came into place. They have not been able to perform up expectation. They failed. We played brains. He failed. Because the owner knows what he has given. They spoke against God. And God sent a fairy serpent. And he beat them. See what God did. Yes? And many of the people of Israel died. Yes. Therefore the people came to Moses. They came. And said. They said. We have sinned. We sinned. For we have spoken against the Lord and we against spoke you. Again. Until we come to that realization. We might not be able to be saved from this virus. We need to return. Everyone, every pastor, every head, every man, everyone calling upon the name of the Lord, the true God, must return. Oh, we have spoken against God. They confessed. They said what? We have sinned. We, we have sinned. spoken against God and against you. We spoke against God and against you. Pray to the Lord. Pray. That he... Take away the serpents from us. That he will take away the serpent. Look at God. What did he say? So Moses prayed for the people. Yes. Then the Lord said to Moses. The Lord said. Make a fiery serpent. <laughs> and set it on a pole. And God. God. His intent is to the end. Make a fiery serpent. And set it on a pole. Put it on a pole. And it shall be that everyone who is beaten. It shall be that all that is beaten. When he looks at it, shall live. As soon as he looks at that serpent. All that is beaten. Jesus came in John chapter 3, verse 14. He said... And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the world. As Moses. <laughs> what a wisdom. What a, what, what, what a way in God. As Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness. Even so must the son of man be lifted up. He became a similitude of the brazen serpent. Jesus compared his journey. It was like Jonah. Jonah lived three days and three nights in the belly of the fish. It is like it was like the serpent Moses lifted up. In God said, read, read again. That numbers. God told Moses, make a fairy serpent. Make a fairy serpent and set it on a pole. Put it on a pole. And it shall be. It shall be. That everyone who is beaten. Look at the instruction. Everyone who is beaten. When he looks at it. When you look at it. Shall live. You shall live. Everyone who is beaten. Everyone who is afflicted. Everyone who is, who, who is affected. When they look at it. They shall be free. They shall be healed. They shall be made whole. But before he got to that, he said, they returned and said, we have sinned. They returned. Chronicles chapter 7 verse 14, the Bible says, if my people that are called by my name 
You are my name. Shall humble themselves. Oh God. May God deliver us. If my people that are called by my name shall humble themselves. If my people who are called by my name. Yes. Will humble themselves. Humble themselves. And pray. And pray. And seek my face. And seek my face. And turn from their wicked ways. And turn from their wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven. I will hear. And will forgive their sins. Forgive their sins. And heal their lungs. And heal their lungs. The weapon of man is destroying man now. But in my spirit, God is saying, I'll raise my finger. And everyone that is affected, everyone that is beaten, when they shall look unto it, they shall be healed. God is out to do something this time and deliver the son, his sons. God is out for something beautiful. Because he would not want his children to be out. The purpose of which he brought them forth is still available. We still are here. So he will still need them to be living. But look at the way the weapon of man is killing man. The children of God are not, are not being seen as the children of God. They die. With the power of the weapon of man. Hence, everybody is one. If there was power in the church, the government would run to the church. Save now. But there is no power. We have to begin to pray every if when, when we deserve power, we deserve power for money. I thank God once again. For the life of the Son of God that is sent, that we saw. Papa Samuel Billy Joseph for sure. Everything is free. Everything in God, within, was free. What is the whole church, the global church doing today? For everything, it's about money. Yet you preach Christ crucified. Whose resurrection, whose, whose gospel of resurrection was thwarted because of money. Let us change our ways. Let us call ourselves back. Let us bring our lives back and save the people of God, save the land. Let's all go and pray and talk to God. God, deliver our land. Deliver our lives. The wrath of God is obvious. Man is now suppressing man. It is time for us to call on God. But this time, in the spirit he told me, like he raised his finger, raise your finger. He said, when they see it, they shall be healed. I pray the health of God will locate everyone. As you watch this video, whatever form, whatever seed of any virus of the evil one that has affected you, it is time for God to separate you and separate his own children. I pray as you look unto the brazen serpent as they look there, as you look unto this finger as it's raised now, God will heal you. He will heal your system. He will heal your body. He will heal your members. He will heal your being. You shall be free and be made whole. All that pertains to you that was stolen and lost shall be restored. The health shall be restored. 
the life shall be restored. And the weapon of the enemy, even the venom of the serpent, the power of his ministration over you, shall cease to be. You shall be free. So shall it be. In Jesus' name. Let us pray. Jehovah. Jesus Christ, holy mighty. We thank you, Lord. For your true work. You have sent to deliver our soul. Save us, Lord. Like you raise your finger in those days. Separate your people. Release them from every poison. Let the venom of the serpent that has walked illness and diseases in the system today cease to be. Purge all the system of your sons, Lord, and release them truly. Let your name be highly glorified. And let the truth of your word be established. So shall it be. In Jesus' name we are prayed. Amen. Amen. Amen in Jesus' name. God bless you. Thank you.